Hello and welcome to the last topic of propositional logic or at least the uh, proposition logic uh, as per the understanding which is there in your book and um, we have um, used a lot of techniques we have used rules of inference rules of replacement cp uh, ip scp we also know how to prove tautologies and so on uh, we have uh, initially used uh, truth tables and so on so all these techniques basically tells us that how we can prove some argument to be valid or invalid or how we can see whether a statement is a tautology or a contradiction or a contingent proposition and so on. <clears throat> there is one method which is nothing but a truth table method but a very short truth table method usually used to test whether an argument is valid or whether an argument is invalid or whether a statement is uh, a tautology or a statement is a contingent proposition or a statement is a uh, contradiction and we call it <coughs> sorry we call it the reductio ad absurdum method uh, that means you are reducing something to an absurdity this is something which is a very old technique uh, which we have used in uh, mathematics uh, you people have used uh, all these techniques in your school days as well right like if you remember or recall uh, that how to prove root 3 is an irrational number right or root 2 is an irrational number so we consider that root 3 or root 2 is irrational number which can be expressed in form of p upon q right where q is not equal to 0 and then once we start proving it we find that no we cannot prove it so our initial assumption was wrong and uh, we cannot prove that uh, uh, it can be expressed in form of p upon q where q is not equal to 0 and therefore it becomes an irrational number because it cannot be expressed in form of a rational number <coughs> So it is an old technique, this reductio ad absurdum or uh, reduc uh, reducing something to absurdity. The same thing can be used also uh, as a shorter truth table method to have a very quick glance of like, like suppose if a question comes to you and uh, they ask you to prove that, okay, uh, this is an argument which is given to you, prove the validity or invalidity of the given argument, right? Now you know how to prove the invalidity of an argument. You also know how to prove the validity of an argument. But if you do not know whether the argument is valid or invalid, so what to do in order to check? So it is not exactly proving invalidity, but more or less the same thing. But still, since it is there in your course, usually you can skip, the, uh, skip this part as well because there is nothing new which is taught here or not, something new which is uh, told uh, to you. But this is a commonsensical understanding that if suppose an argument is given to you or if suppose a statement is given to you, how to check whether it is going to be valid or invalid. And suppose if you can prove something invalid, then definitely it is invalid. You can go on to show that what will be the grid of it, that what will be the value of uh, P, Q, R and S so that it becomes an invalid argument. <clears throat> but suppose you need to, you are not very sure. So the first thing which should come to your mind is that first try to test it, whether it is a valid argument or an invalid argument. If it is an invalid argument, then definitely you have the technique of putting the values, assigning the values and tell us that, okay, this is the combination with which the premises becomes true and the conclusion becomes false. Therefore, the argument is invalid. But suppose if, uh, uh, the argument is uh, not, you cannot prove it to be invalid, then definitely it has to be valid, right? And if it is valid, then you have to use the natural reduction method. Then depending upon whether you can use SCP or IP or CP or if something has been told to you in the uh, uh, question that no, you need to use only this method or you cannot use that method, something like that. So all this depends on the instruction. So let us take a question from your book only. Uh, it says that, uh, suppose if this question comes like A wedge B uh, implies C dot D. Okay, this is the first premise. The second premise says D wedge E uh, implies F. Therefore, A implies F. Now, this is the question. Now, suppose... I have to decide whether this argument is valid or invalid. So I know at least, I, I know only one thing, that how to um, assign the value so that I can make it invalid, right? So let us see. 
can I make it invalid? Hmm? This is the first thing which you should understand. Uh, I will look, okay. So if I have to make this argument as an invalid argument, you know what is the procedure. We have to put A as true and F as false. So this, the combined value of this will come as false, right? Okay. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F. So A, B, C, D, E, and F. We have all these things and we will check what are the values of this which is coming. We have already put A as true and F as false in order to make the conclusion false because how to prove uh, an argument invalid? We say that if the premises are true and the conclusion is false, then the argument is invalid. So we are trying to prove this argument to be invalid. Hmm. So we put A as true, F as false, and we will find the combined value of A implies F will be false. So the conclusion becomes false. Now the next task is to make the premises true. Now we know that A is true, so it does not matter what the value of B is. So this will become true. Now C dot D, you have to put it as true. So that because this value will be true irrespective of the value of B. So I am keeping the value of B uh, in my hands. I am not putting the value so that we can change it at some other place if it is required. However, there is no need for changing the value because there is uh, nowhere uh, the value of uh, B will be used. So I, can, I will put B also as true and C is also true, D is also true. Fine. So I will see that A wedge B will be true implies C wedge D is also true so this is going to be a true proposition so my this line has become true fine this is already false now i have to make this line as true as well so i will prove that it is going to be invalid okay now d wedge e d i know true so irrespective of the fact that uh, and d has to be necessarily true you can see this because look if the value of a is true okay so irrespective of the fact of what the B's value is, this expression will be true. Now in order to make this whole expression to be true, you need to make this expression to be true. And for making C dot D to be true, you have to put C and you have to put D as true. So you cannot change the values here. So D has to be true. So D is true irrespective of the fact what is the value of E, this value will be true. Okay. Okay. Now implies F. What is the value of F false? Now, does not matter what you do with E, the value of this can never come out to be true. If the value of this can never come out to be true, it says very clearly because then you have to put F as true, right? But then you cannot make F as true because if you put F as true, then this expression will not be a false proposition or the conclusion will not be false. So it tells us that you cannot make you cannot make this statement d wedge e implies f irrespective of whatever value you put as e as a true statement which confirms that this argument is a valid argument it is not an invalid argument because in invalid argument what will happen in invalid argument it will happen that the expression will have premises as true and the conclusion as false but this gives you a very fast way of telling that, okay, if I need to check for myself that whether this argument is going to be valid or invalid, you have a very strong and fast and quick technique to check whether an argument is valid or invalid. So it is just like putting the values. By putting the values, you can prove an argument to be invalid. But with this, you understand that this argument is not having a substitution instance, which can make the premises true and the conclusion false. Then you have to use the natural direction method to solve that how you can show or how you can prove but this will always tell you this will always give you that decision because truth tables are decision procedures so it will tell you that okay this is the way i will find out that yes these premises are going to be uh, true and the conclusion is false okay then the argument is invalid the premises cannot be true together if i make the conclusion false then the argument has to be valid. Okay, so this is the technique. This is not only applicable in arguments, it is also applicable in a statement like, suppose there is a statement like, it is also given in your book, I will take this example of Peirce law. Peirce law says, uh, the expression for Peirce law is like this. P implies Q 
implies p implies p this is pierce law and yep this is pierce law and now you have to check that uh, whether this is a contradiction or this is a tautology right or this is a contingent proposition as well so let us first try to see whether it is a contradiction or a tautology now like suppose if i have to prove that because we now know how to prove something is a tautology right or how uh, all these things are done so try to understand if i need to prove this as a contradiction what i need to do is that this part has to become true and this part has to become false so true implies false will be false then it will be very easily shown that this is a contradiction right this expression is a contradiction so what i need to do for this i need to put the value of p as false okay so if i put the value of p as false does not matter what the value of q is can i prove it to be a um, contradiction right so p implies q this is going to be false right this is false this is false and this is false right <clears throat> this is the idea okay now if because if you put p as true then does not matter what it will be a dot logic so i am trying to play safe i am trying to see whether i can prove it to be a contradiction so i am taking p as false so because of this the p will uh, p here will also come as false p here will also come as false okay does not matter let us try to check so if i can make this expression because if i can make this expression true and implies because this implies is coming and this as false then the end result will be false this is the idea this is something which i am trying to do so can i do this now this is the idea so i will try to make this expression true and this expression false right if i can make this expression true and this expression false then this will become true right now if i need to make this expression true because um, uh, the whole idea is to make this uh, peirce law okay i need to check whether this is peirce law p implies q implies p implies p hmm. okay fine now what i need to do i need to make this whole expression true right so in order to make this whole expression true i need to make this uh, as uh, this expression will be true when this expression will be true this expression will be true if this comes out to be true you know this this value has to come out as true right so this is the idea so let me check if i can do if i put q as true so false implies true will be true and true implies false will be false so it will come out to be false so it will not help okay so does not matter whatever you put whether you put true or you put false right false implies true will be true false implies false will also be true true implies false if you see this value it will be true so for true also it will be true for false also it will be true okay now true implies false will always be false irrespective of whatever value you have false implies false will always be true so does not matter what this will always come out to be a total that means it is impossible to make this expression nothing but a tautology right so these kind of things it's it's nothing it's a shorter truth table method because you can make the whole truth table and see or you can put short values and see the whole idea is that these techniques these methods tells us that if we are doing or if we are solving some questions so there can be certain preliminary examinations which may be required because like look in an examination a question can come always that proves the validity or invalidity of the given expression you do not know whether you have to prove the validity or invalidity so a quick check will be this so you quickly check this find out whether it's a valid argument whether it's an invalid argument if it's an invalid argument you will put the values right 
because you will put the values that this is the value, this is the value, this is the value, and this value will suffice our requirement to prove that this argument is invalid because we have a substitution instance which can make the premises true and conclusion false. So that is the idea. But if you are unable to prove that, then that argument will be valid. Then you have to use natural reduction method, rules of inference, rules of replacement, uh, CP, IP, SCP, whatever is given to you or whatever is the requirement of the question you will solve. So these small, small things actually tells us a lot of things about how to go for the question. So these are certain preliminary examinations, as I told you, which uh, helps us in deciding whether we should go for proving validity or whether we should go for proving invalidity, whether a statement is a tautology, whether a statement is a contradiction and so on. So I hope so that uh, these lectures were helpful and these videos were also helpful for uh, making you understand certain things. But even if uh, these videos are made, you are welcome to ask and take up questions in the class. And moreover, we will be having a lot of doubt sessions as well uh, before the examination so that all the doubts which you have in your mind, all the questions which you could not solve and so on could be taken up in those doubt clearing remedial sessions. Thank you very much.